And the research that we do or participate in is ultimately aimed at trying to meet the needs of our customers to the best of our abilities. The corn breeding for the Viking and the Blue River brands is run by a company called Encore Genetics, and we are part owner of that company. It's based in Kelly, Iowa, and it's focused 100% on developing new proprietary uh, non-GMO and organic corn germplasm, and has developed and launched uh, several successful commercial hybrids and inbreds. Encore Genetics really has its roots going back to 2001, when we formed a company called CRD and Pegasus. And the breeding program actually dates back to that time. So the breeding program is actually 25 years old, but now Albert Lee has an ownership position in it. We utilize that program to identify uh, hybrids that are exclusive to that program. So in other words, it would be an Encore male by an Encore female. But we also utilize that program to develop co-hybrids. So we might take an Encore female, cross it with a male that's available to us as an in-licensed product, and develop a unique proprietary hybrid that we have a license to sell in the United States. We run hybrid tests or demonstration plots, or we do inbred increases. 100% of the goal here is to develop proprietary conventional and non-GMO corn hybrids that perform great on farms throughout uh, the United States. Basically how the breeding program is set up in the field. So we have blocks where we're developing our inbred lines and then we have our blocks where we do our hybrids that then they will be evaluated next year. And then we can use also the winter to produce some of the hybrids that we couldn't do this summer. We can also use our winter nursery to produce those hybrids. This year, Encore Genetics is running about 60,000 yield trial plots. And a yield trial plot would be either two rows of corn 20 feet long or four rows of corn. Those are our standard plot sizes. We have some that are bigger than that. They have a very narrow focus, unlike companies that are trying to use a lot of their corn research apparatus to introgress traits. These folks are 100% devoted to developing conventional, non-GMO germplasm that can be used on organic farms and non-GMO farms. Well, Encore has, uh, I think, 13 test sites this year in Minnesota, Iowa, and Illinois. And we build these tests, and then each test might go, they don't all go to the same site. So they actually are in the fundamental core business of developing new inbreds as well as identifying hybrids. So the new inbreds are you take an existing inbred and cross it with something else and then you back cross it for several generations to develop a pure line inbred that you then cross with other inbreds to see if it makes better hybrids. And corn breeding is a numbers game. You have to do that a lot of times before you develop an inbred that actually makes a superior product to what you are currently selling. We have to do top crossing to develop a whole bunch of potential hybrids and then we we also have to make the hybrid seed itself uh, often in the winters. So we have a winter nursery as well as a summer nursery. And in Chile in the winter time, we're doing not any product evaluation other than walking the plots and taking notes on phenotypic things, especially for the inbreds. But we're mostly doing uh, inbred increases and some hybrid seed increases that allow us to then test those hybrids uh, in the next summer. In addition, we're doing work there around pure maize because we want to we want to advance the new pure maize hybrids as quickly as we can, and so we're doing that in Chile as well. All the corn grown out there it traces back to one of three places. They really want everybody to continue using traits. Roundup Ready is the dominant trait. About 95% of the corn grown in the United States is Roundup Ready and the insect traits have really fallen off in their importance. But the reason they do that is because they make a lot of money selling the trait. It, it just adds to the margin that they get from selling the corn hybrid. Well, Albert Lee is moving to be a completely non-GMO corn hybrid. And Blue River Organic Seed sells organic hybrids. In both those situations, they don't want GMO traits. Unfortunately, the access to competitive corn hybrids uh, that don't have those traits is now severely limited. And so our role, which is now much more important for Albert Lee than it was 20 years ago, 
is to help provide completely independent corn hybrids that will not be GMO and that we can control um, supplying Albert Lee's production untreated seed stock, which is a requirement for uh, organic hybrid production if you're following all the rules. So it is both important for their product, but it's also important for their survival. If they don't control their own corn hybrids, they really don't control their fate. Our overall breeding efforts are important to our farm customers because we are uh, working on the characteristics that are important to them. And it isn't just things that we think are important to them. We actually ask our customers and our dealers, you know, what things do you really want to see in a new corn hybrid? Uh, it's not just about yield, especially for organic farmers. Yield is always important. It's what pays the bills. But they also need hybrids that have excellent emergence and, and good speed to canopy. They also need hybrids with broad adaptability. They need hybrids that dry down quickly in the fall. They need hybrids with good ear flex. They need hybrids with good drought stress tolerance. And through our breeding program and our product evaluation program, we not only can bring out new hybrids with these characteristics, but we can also do a really good job of product placement. So farmers can plant in a sandy field with confidence or in a low wet piece of ground with confidence or for silage with confidence. So our whole evaluation program is keyed around identifying hybrids that work the best in those situations.